What's up, y'all? That is a tune called The Banshee. This is an octopus. I don't have any sort of Banshee Halloween attire, so this is about the best I can come up with. We're gonna break that tune down after I take this off because it's kind of pinching my head. Let's start with the A part here. Basic melody, we'll come back and hit on some ornaments and variations and all that good stuff. But nice and slow, basic melody. Go ahead and run that again because this tune is nice because that's really the whole thing. Um, it's just a repeat, so we'll do that bit again. So that's the whole A part. B part jumps up high and it's got some kind of tricky back and forth stuff with the octaves, so we'll, we'll break that down and, and you might want to run that a little bit slower when you get to that section. Now here's the B part, it does jump way up high. Kind of bouncy bit, that's the one I was talking about. I'm going to run that phrase again. The, the second half of this is a little bit different. I'm just going to rerun that, so give you another crack at it here. So again, same section, first half for the B part. Second section does start the same way, but the end is a bit different. Actually, the end is sort of the same way that the A part ends, so here we go with the second half. So a combination of the first half of the B part, second half of the A part. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna run the whole B part nice and slow all the way through. Hopefully that made sense. That's the whole that's the whole tune. Let's talk about some ornaments. We'll get to that sort of weird, tricky part in the B part in a second, but off the bat, a couple of good spots for rolls. The only other thing I'm doing there, other than the, the long rolls and the Gs, is on when I get to the E, I'm doing that sort of double cut thing, I guess we're calling it. So as I land on that, cut with these two fingers here. Could just do a single cut, that works too. Uh, when I get to that D, I'll either uh, cran that or I'll do a triplet. Or... And then the same sort of uh, double cut on the E when I come back. Now, I am doing that, that popping noise that um, as I land from, go from B to A, as I go from B to A, popping that top finger off. Sometimes when I land on that G too, I'll do that the crossing noise. Um, sort of a tap, I guess, but really you're just landing on the note below it first briefly. And since that's a repeat, we kind of do a lot of the same stuff, but I'll mix up that triplet, mix up the crayon, sometimes simplify, sometimes make it a little bit more complicated. Now, the B part, jumping up to the, the top half of the second octave, to me always means exercise a bit of caution. Uh, I, would, I would 
I would refrain from throwing too much on there just because those notes are more likely to crack. So really all I'm doing on those top A's is just a, a quick tap and a cut. Uh, sorry, cutting the G in fact. Nothing there but a roll on the B. Sometimes I'll do that, that piping ornament, which I can't ever come up with a name for. As you're going from A to B, I've explained that a few times, but real quick. And it needs to be fairly quick and, and kind of just rip out of there. Otherwise, a, a, a roll works fine. And then again, a roll on the B as I come back to it for this little bouncy bit. Now the bouncy bit, I tend to just tongue those. And I'm, I'm separating the notes because they're fairly easy to, to squawk and miss. I want to make sure I'm getting good tone on either side of that octave jump. Sometimes I will do a tap, or that same crossing note tap thing. Uh, so as I land on that last one, just to give the last one a bit of a boost, because it'll be the quietest of the bunch. Certainly an optional thing there. Then coming off that phrase, same thing as there, and then the same as we, we're ending the A part. That's how I play it. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if you like the tune. Uh, happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.